Hello, everybody. This is Cindy Chatul from Roosevelt High School, where I teach biology and biotech. Today, I'm going to go over the last worksheet that's um, in the uh, genetics unit. This one focuses on solving a problem of inheritance with some traits that we haven't necessarily looked at yet. Um, one is the curious trait of whether or not you can roll your tongue like this. That is considered tongue rolling, and um, some people cannot do that due to genetics. Um, and then the other trait is whether or not you taste PTC, which is a bitter tasting chemical that um, most people can taste, but uh, there are people who can't taste that chemical. So these are the two traits we're going to use in this um, example of uh, solving a problem of inheritance. So um, I'm going to shrink myself down and I'm going to show you the worksheet and then I'm going to give you a little bit of background review to make sure you uh, know how to approach this set of problems. So here I go. Down here, this is uh, 6.1, explaining other examples. And we have parents biological mother, biological father, and um, again, we have these two traits that we're interested in, tongue rolling and PTC tasting. And um, so the, the designations for these genes are gonna be T for tasting and R for tongue rolling. Um, the ability to taste is dominant, so it's designated with a capital T, our big T, and tongue rolling, the gene for that is designated by an R. And again, this is another dominant trait, so it is designated as a large R. So let me just quickly go over a couple of um, pieces of background information that you need to understand in order to be able to work through this um, problem. Okay, the first thing that you need to remember is that chromosomes come in pairs and we call those pairs homologous chromosomes. And here they are all color-coded and so we can see here's a human karyotype and for example here is chromosome number one for this individual, one copy was inherited from biological mom, the other copy from biological dad. During meiosis, homologous chromosomes pair up, and that's a really important function of meiosis. The next, con the next concept I quickly want to review is that of crossing over. So here we have an example of some homologous chromosomes that have lined up in the middle um, during meiosis. And so what can happen is that the, these chromosomes get so close to one another that a piece of this chromosome can trade places with a piece of this chromosome and likewise down here. That is what we call crossing over. So here's what it's going to look like. So physically, the chromosomes mash together, essentially, and a piece of one chromosome trades place with another. What this results in is entirely new combinations of genetic material. Here we have a chromosome that is now a mixture of what came from this person's biological dad, what came from this person's biological mom. So this is a new chromosome uh, produced by meiosis as the result of crossing over. Now we're going to come back to this worksheet. And with this background information, you should be able to draw in the chromosomes here that mom has and that dad has, remembering that um, you're going to have a homologous pair for the tasting 
trait, homologous pair for the tongue ruling trait in the mother as well as the father. And then you want to work your way through what happens during meiosis in which you are going to produce gametes down here. And the number of chromosomes will be divided by two. That is a uh, main outcome of meiosis. So starting up here with two pairs or four chromosomes, you know you're on the right track if you end up with two chromosomes each in these gametes. Okay, so the idea is you should work through this on your own pause the video here, do your best, and then uh, come back to the video. I'll show you what the key looks like. This is the key for part one. So let's look at this together. So we start out here with the biological mother, the biological father, and we have a homologous pair of chromosomes for the tasting trait, homologous pair for tongue rolling, that is the same for the biological father. And so the first thing that's going to happen is that the chromosomes have to be duplicated. RNA replication must occur before cell division. So that is what is depicted here. So instead of a chromosome being uh, shown as a straight line, now it's depicted as an X because it has been duplicated. In this process, we can see that um, homologous chromosomes may or may not have engaged in that crossing over process. And so we can have different combinations of genes on these chromosomes. So we can see that's why it came out this way or this way. The next thing that is going to happen is that homologous chromosome pairs are going to be separated in the first division of meiosis, and that is depicted here. So this was a homologous pair that used to be with this one. Now they have been separated. This pair used to be with this one, and now they have been separated. Same thing went on over here on the father's side. Finally, another uh, division during meiosis and we end up with the gametes and so mom has produced eggs and dad has produced sperm that's what gametes are and so here we see the different possible combinations in these gametes so here this gamete has a dominant allele for each of the genes of interest this ends up with a dominant and a recessive, and you can see there's a variety of combinations of alleles that have ended up in these gametes. Okay, so that's how you solve part one to set you up for saying, okay, what if these, this couple is going to produce offspring? What kinds of traits are they likely to have? In part two of this worksheet, you are now asked to do a cross of these parents and you're asked to show um, how these parents could produce a child that has a different genotype from either parent. Okay. Um, so we're going, your, your job is now to pick some gametes from part one show gamete from a, uh, an egg gamete, a sperm gamete, and how is, what, what is that going to look like in the child? Then choose a different pair of gametes and show what would happen if those were the gametes that fused together, what offspring would be produced. So this is going to help you understand that even though these siblings here and here are coming from the same biological parents, they can end up with different genotypes and different phenotypes. Finally, part three, you're asked to show some Punnett squares for um, 
determining the likelihood of these outcomes. So let's have you pause and work this out and then come back, resume, and look at the key. Okay, so here's the key for part two and part three. What we see happening is here is a gamete from mom, a gamete from dad, and when they fuse together in this uh, initial cell of what's going to become a fetus and then be born as baby, we notice that we have um, the dominant allele for tasting and a recessive allele for tasting. It's same with tongue rolling. We have a heterozygous situation. Um, so we can predict that the phenotype for this individual, because we know these are dominant alleles, um, this kid is going to turn out to be a taster with uh, the ability to roll their tongue. Now, let's say two different gametes came together. In this case, it turns out that this is a, a gamete with two recessive alleles, as is this one. This offspring is going to end up with all recessive alleles, and so the genotype is all recessive alleles. The phenotype will be an individual who cannot taste PTC, and cannot roll their tongue. All right, so um, let's come down here to part three, and we can work through these uh, Punnett squares, okay, or sometimes called an egg and sperm chart. And so we, we see here um, one parent's gamete contribution, the other parent's gamete contribution. These are the potential gamete combinations or, or, or um, fused zygote combinations here. And so what do we end up seeing? That there's three situations in which the outcome will be a genotype that has the, uh, that produces tasting. Okay, so that's three to one or 75% chance that if these are the gametes that come together, you're gonna end up with an offspring who can taste PTC. And over here, if we take a look at the chart involving tongue rolling gene, so we have the con we have the contribution of one parent, the contribution of the other parent, and then we see the potential combinations in the offspring. Once again, what do we see? We see a classic outcome of a three to one ratio where 75% are going to have the phenotype being able to roll their tongues. Okay, so that is a review of worksheet 6.1. Thanks, everybody. See you again.